from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Fred Larkin, Johnny. New Jersey fire and casualty. Hope I didn't get you out of bed. Well, you sure did, Freddy, but how are things in Trenton? In Trenton, fine. In the little town of Vineland, I'm not so sure. Vineland? About halfway between Philadelphia and Atlantic City? That's the place. What goes down there? Fire. Arson? That's what I hope you can find out. Well, uh, any reason for suspicion? Yes. The man who holds the policy on $83,000 worth of bedding. Bedding? Mattresses, box springs, it went up in smoke two days ago. Okay, Fred, I'll grab the first train. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the New Jersey Fire and Casualty Insurance Company Home Office, Trenton, New Jersey. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Smoky Sleeper matter. Expense account item one, 1075, fare and incidentals, Hartford to Trenton. Item two, 80 cents, taxi to Fred Larkin's office on West State Street. He lost no time in getting right to the point. That's right, 83,000, total loss. Well, who's filed the claim, Fred? Name is Ben Murray, sole owner and manager of Ben Murray Furniture Sales in Philadelphia. Sort of a small chain scattered around all over the city. I thought you said the loss was in Vineland. It was. That's where he had a big warehouse. Well, if his stores are in Philly... He claims it's cheaper than maintaining a big warehouse in the city. Also, apparently, it's close to a couple of sources of supply. He's been a good account, Johnny. We've made a lot of money on his policies. Well, it sounds like you've issued him quite a few. Well, we have. You see, in addition to the usual coverage on his stores, we've issued him a lot of short-termers on warehouse contents from time to time. I don't quite see what you mean. Uh, His whole business is based on special sales. Free inventory, going out of business, distressed merchandise, fire and water damage sales, summer, winter, spring, and fall sales. Anything you can think of. No kidding. Periodically, he loads up his vinyl warehouse with stuff he's accumulated for the next big sale. And we insure it. This time, it was $83,000 worth of box springs and mattresses. Wow, that's a lot of betting for just one sale. Uh, Don't worry. He'd have got rid of it. His salesmen are the sharpest bunch you ever saw. Too sharp, if you ask me. Almost like a bunch of con men. You know what switching means in the retail trade? Isn't that when they advertise a well-known item at a very low price? That's it. Then when you try to buy it, they just uh, happen to have sold the last one. That's it. But by that time, they've got you in the store where they can use the high-pressure pitch to sell you some inferior item at an even higher price. And on a no-return basis. Yeah, by the time the customer gets wise, it's too late. Exactly. I suspect they're not above using the label switch, too. You know, have some local manufacturer make up a cheap item, then put a nationally recognized label on it, or a pretty good copy. My, my, what nice clients you have, Freddy. Well, what can we do, Johnny? As long as we don't catch them red-handed in something that directly affects us. Well, you don't need to write any more policies. The company says different. At least until such a time as they try to pull something on us. Or we find proof of such doings. I see. Well, where'll I find this Ben Murray? Either his main office in Philadelphia or down in Vineland, looking over what's left in the shell of that warehouse. On what exactly does Murray base the amount of his claim? Face value of the policy, which in turn was based on the cost of the goods to him. Huh? You mean you used the figures he gave you? Mm-hmm. Hardly. We got the figures from the actual bills sent him by the manufacturer. Well, I wondered. I don't blame you. No, Johnny, that 83000 is exactly what the mattresses and box springs cost him. It was a special order from one manufacturer, made up especially for one big sale. Can your secretary check on Murray's whereabouts for me? Sure. All right, then let me use your phone. I may be able to save us all a lot of time, labor, and soap. I call my old friend Adam Bowles, who lived within a few miles of Vineland who, before he retired, was one of the top arson men in the country. Investigator, I mean. He wasn't home, but I left word for him to drive to Vineland and meet me in the lobby of the East Landis Hotel whenever I got there. 
Meanwhile, Fred's secretary had learned that Ben Murray was in his Philadelphia office. Expense account item 3560 for a train to Philadelphia and cab to the main office of Ben Murray Furniture Sales. The place was a madhouse. Okay, Dollar, go ahead in. It's that first office on the right. Thanks. And listen. Oh, wait a minute. Sales department, call me back. I'm busy. Listen, Dollar, if you can get a word in edgewise with Ben, ask him where's the contracts for that West Philadelphia deal, will you? Oh, sure. Sales department. Yeah? I'll turn a hose on some of that stuff and call it a flood sale. Look like that. Make the picture in that advertisement look good, see? Put a lot of stuff around. Pictures on the wall, rug on the floor, stuff like that. Yeah, make the suckers think they're getting a 25-piece dining room suit, not just a table, four chairs, and 20 crummy dishes. Dollar, sit down. Thanks. Yeah, make it look like they'll be getting everything they see in the ad. Yeah. Now, did you get them sofas in from Sterling? Okay. Put a price ticket of 95 bucks on them, and then mark it down to 49.95, and we'll clean out the whole... Mr. Murray. Huh? He what? Sterling charges 25 bucks for those lousy sofas. Listen, we're giving them twenty-two fifty for them, except for the demonstrator we show on the floor, the good one. Who does he think he is telling me the price he's going to charge me? Oh, the lousy bunch of chiselers trying to hike the price on me. Boy, what a business. From the looks of that outer office, you've got plenty of it. Yeah, yeah, volume, Dollar. That's what does it. I work on a narrow margin, see? Oh. Yeah, sometimes I even lose money, just to keep the volume up. I got nine stores, see? They're all over Philadelphia. Hey, Ben. Yeah, what's the matter now? Hines Street wants to know the sale prices on those three grades of night cloud mattresses. What'll I tell him? What are the cost prices? All the same. Thirteen bucks a piece. Cost us thirteen bucks, huh? Well, price them at, uh, at, uh, thirty-nine ninety-five, forty-nine ninety-five, and sixty-nine ninety-five. Okay, Ben. Hey, Larry. Narrow profit margin, huh? And hey, now, look, Dollar. Your card says you're an insurance investigator. That's right. Well, if it's about that fire I had down in Vineland a couple of days That's ago... That's exactly what it's about. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, oh, for... Yeah, what is it? Oh, yeah, well, listen. Hey, pick that other phone off the hook, Dollar. That noise is killing me, would you? Why not? I might learn something. Well, you tell him I don't care if he's the Department of Internal Revenue in person. Hello. We pay hey, the Ben, guys I got like a dame him, here in the store found out that bed we sent her. It wasn't the same that? one she saw on the floor. Well, no. no. Wait, wait we just a minute. I, uh, uh, she threatens okay. to go see the Better Business Bureau. Well, look, uh, this That's isn't Ben. Huh? That's what I mean. Just hold on a minute, will you? Hold on. you tell that bookkeeper we got there, he either keeps the books the way I tell him, or either he... Well, look, I'll call you back, see? Did you hold that call for me, Dollar? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah? Yeah? Well, don't take any chances. Give her anything she wants. Give her the one she saw on the floor. Go out and buy her one, a good one. Just make her happy. Keep her from... Uh, from oh, you know what I mean. Yeah. Troubles, troubles, troubles. Well, now, look, Dollar. You think there was anything wrong with that fire, you prove it. I'll give you this whole business. What do you think I am, a crook? I haven't said that. Yet. Then, then what's the idea investigating? Not you, but that fire. We always investigate when a claim this large is involved. Oh, yeah? Do it automatically. Look, I'm trying to run an honest business here, just barely scraping by. That phone call just now. A customer ain't 100% satisfied, we make her satisfied. Oh, sure. To keep her from blabbing about the way you rooked her. Oh, look, look, get out of here, would you? Can't you see I'm busy? I try to run a decent business here, and punks like you come in and... Oh, if I'm... Yeah, hold on. Look, you got some legit reason to investigate, Dollar. You come around then. Maybe I will. Now go on. Get out, will you? Gladly. Listen, Charlie. You tell him he tries to outsmart me, I'll sue him for every cent he's got. Expense account item four. $50 deposit on a drive-your-own car. I crossed the Delaware River Bridge and finally picked up Route 47 for the 35-mile drive down to Vineland. Flat country, this, with plenty of beautiful trees and rich farmland, an occasional cranberry bog. The soft smell of ripening peaches greeted me from the vast orchards I passed. It was all very pleasant. Certainly a complete contrast to the noisy, unhealthy joint I just left. And I could see only too plainly why Fred Larkin suspected arson in the warehouse fire. Sure. If a character like Ben Murray didn't resort to arson, he'd feel he was missing a good bet. Proof of arson, however, is a different matter. And not always easy to come by. That's where I wanted the help of Ed Bowles. But Ed hadn't got to the hotel when I arrived in Vineland. 
So I drove over to the police headquarters at 610 Wood Street, a block north of Landis Avenue, the main drag. There I found Sergeant Louis Tommaso, who'd been working on the case. Be glad to take you over there, Dollar. Just the other side of Chestnut Avenue. That's over south of town. All right, Sergeant. I'd like to see that warehouse. Or what's left of it. Oh, there's plenty left of the warehouse. All metal construction. Come on. That in itself might make it hard to spot our... Dollar, we went over the... Lieutenant, Mr. Dollar and I are going out to the Benmer warehouse. We went over that place with a fine-tooth comb, both during and after the fire. Came up with nothing, huh? Nothing that would give any cause for suspicion. Sergeant... Do you know a man by the name of Adam Bowles? I certainly do. He's been giving me a lot of help with this. You know, just to sort of keep his hand in. And he's found nothing? Not a thing. But of course, he's the kind that never gives up. Yeah. Well, let's get on over and take a look at that place. It was obvious that the whole contents of that warehouse was damaged beyond repair. And apparently the big steel building had been packed to the roof. I looked over some of the damaged mattresses very carefully, sometimes with the aid of my pocket knife, and I learned some rather interesting things, things that showed the best possible reasons for wanting to burn up a lot of merchandise like this. Hmm. Wow. Well, have you seen enough, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, I guess so. But I still want to talk to Adam Bowles. So let's go on back to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Looks like Ed pulling up in that car there. Huh? Well, so it is. Hey, Ed. What? Johnny. Yeah, well, hiya. Sergeant, don't tell me you sent for a half-wit like Dollar. <laughs> Just here. a minute now, Stinky. Why, the greenest rookie on the force would get further Ed, than... I'll brain you. You two know each other. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> Johnny, how are you, baby? Great, just great. You got my message, huh? Yeah, but I hereby inform you that, as usual, you got here too late. Oh, is that so? When I found out you were coming, I decided I'd better get to work, if only to show you up. <laughs> So I did, and I found out who started the fire. Well, I've got a pretty good suspicion myself. Who did it, Ad? Poor old Jerry Cumber. Who? Jerry? The old town ne'er-do-well? Yep, that poor, foolish old wino. Well, how'd it happen? Oh, he was just wandering around that night, as he often does, with a bottle to keep him company. Found the back door of the warehouse open, thought he'd take a little nap, or rather sleep it off. He certainly had his choice of nice soft beds. Yeah, so he went to sleep with a lighted cigarette in his fingers. And there you have it. And the funny thing, Sergeant... Yeah? The only charge you can really hold the old bum on is being drunk and disorderly. And, of course, trespass. What? Well, you look it up. You'll see I'm right. As for you, Johnny, you can just go on back to your company and tell them to pay the claim. Oh, that's so? Yes, sir. Case is closed. At least for you. That's where you're wrong. Huh? After a couple of things I heard at the Benmer office, plus a couple of things I've seen here, Adam, I think this case is just starting for me. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. For a long time, people have been saying that the Earth is shrinking because transportation is getting faster and faster. And because this is true, people are getting closer, too. Today, our neighbors are not only the ones who live next door to us. They're all over the world. It is axiomatic that one should help his neighbor. But Americans have gone a step further. In addition to individuals helping individuals, now many American cities help many other cities through the Sister City program. Now, perhaps you've heard how it works. If not, here's an example or two. In the fall of 1959, a large area of Nagoya, Japan, was struck by a devastating typhoon. Her sister city, Los Angeles, California, sent tons of relief materials to Nagoya by way of an Air Force plane headed for the area. The Marines and the Navy rendered vital emergency aid during the disaster. When earthquakes shook Viña del Mar, Chile, during the summer of 1960, her sister city, Sausalito, California, sent hundreds of dollars worth of relief materials to help out. Another case in point, the school children of Clovis, New Mexico, sent a number of cultural exchange packages to students in their sister city of Adana, Turkey. 
There are hundreds of such examples because there are hundreds of sister cities. By using this means of diplomacy, friendship and understanding have increased throughout the world and paved the way for permanent freedom, the right of all men everywhere. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Smoky Sleeper Matter. <laughs> From the looks of things, the case was practically over. The fire at the warehouse full of box springs and inner spring mattresses had been accidental. And it looked, I underline that word looked, as though Ben Murray's claim for reparation to the tune of $83,000 was entirely justified. Ed Bowles, the finest expert on arson I knew, had produced the man who started the fire as proof. So on the surface, there was nothing for the company to do but pay Ben Murray's claim. But I smell a rat, a big one. Expense account item five, 75 cents for a person-to-person call to Fred Larkin in Trenton. Well, Johnny, if you're satisfied with Bull's conclusion that it wasn't arson, well, that's that. We'll have to pay off the claim. Uh, what if I could prove fraud? Fraud? What do you mean? Look, Fred, you told me you saw the bills, the manufacturer's bills to Murray, giving valuation on the bedding that was stored in that warehouse. Yes, I have photostats of those bills right here in my desk. But what... Good for you. Dig them out, will you? Oh, why? Go on, go on. Dig them out, Fred, and read them to me. But if there was no arson, I fail to see what you're driving Look, will at. you do what I ask you? I'm trying to save your company some money. All right, all right. Ah, uh, here now. Uh, now, what do you want to know? Well, the labels on the remains of the mattresses I looked at at the scene of the fire, those labels indicated there, there was a model called the Night Cloud Sleep Rest. And that checks with these bills. Uh, let's see. Uh, there were... 3,500 mattresses called Night Cloud Sleep Rest. Well, forget the quantities. What was the manufacturer's price to Ben Murray on that Night Cloud Sleep Rest? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Johnny, they cost Ben Murray exactly twenty-five fifty apiece. And there's an equal number of box springs to match. Twenty-five fifty. That's right. But I overheard him say in Philadelphia that he only paid... Hmm. What, Johnny? Uh, nothing, nothing. What other models are on those bills? Uh, Night Cloud. Cloud Super Sleep. And the price? Uh, just a second. And look while you're figuring, you might be interested in knowing that the labels on that sleep rest indicated a retail price of $69 each. Some profit, huh? Ah, uh, here now. Johnny, the Night Cloud Supers cost Murray $26.20 apiece. Wow, hey. All right, I got it. And he claimed to be working on a narrow profit margin. Now, the Night Cloud Perfection Sleep cost him uh, $27.14 each. Good. Any more? Uh, those were the only ones he bought and stored in the warehouse. All right. Now, give me the name and address of the manufacturer. Easy. Golden Bedding Corporation, Woodvine, New Jersey. Good. Now, one more thing. Can you think of the name of another big chain of furniture stores, you know, like Ben Murray's, only in uh, New York or Chicago or some other big city? Well, of course, there's Glauter Brothers in New York. Glauter Brothers. Only they're such a disreputable outfit that when they try to talk insurance with us... Freddy, got... that's all the better. Thanks a lot. Now, wait, Johnny. You still haven't told me... Oh, I will, Freddy. Don't you worry. I will. <laughs> Why I didn't get pinched for speeding somewhere along Highway 49, I'll never know, because I certainly didn't hold back the horsepower. Just short of the town of Tuckahoe, I turned off on 557, and then a few miles later pulled into Woodvine. Although it's a small community surrounded by farms that boasts a big hat factory, a couple of clothing factories, a vast, sprawling state institution, and on the far edge of town, the Golden Bedding Corporation's huge plant. I figured the best thing to do was put on a bull front and pull my way into the president's office. But any such tactics proved entirely unnecessary. Barney Glauter, huh? Uh, yes, Mr. Golden, uh, but just Barney's good enough. Well, I should say it is, because you must be Barney Jr. I've known your papa for years. <laughs> Sit down, my boy. Would you like a cigar? <sighs> Why, uh, no, no thanks. You don't look like your old man, though. You know that? Not a bit. Of course, I haven't seen him since 42. <laughs> Barney Glauter. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you doing in this part of the country, huh, Barney? Oh, um... Uh, Business? A pleasure trip. Business, huh? What's the matter? We haven't had any orders from you people lately, huh? Well, up to now, I haven't really had anything to do with the business. <laughs> Living off the old man's million, huh? <laughs> Smart boy. Did you go to college? Yeah, full four years. Yeah, that's the way. Smart boy. Now you are in the business. Buying, maybe? Well, if you mean from you, that depends. <laughs> if you're as sharp as your papa. How old is he now, huh? Pop? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, let me see. Yeah, how's your mama? Mama? She... Uh, look, Mr. Golden, if mm-hmm. you if you don't mind, uh, we'll talk business first. Huh? <laughs> Chip off the old block. Sure, business always first. 
After maybe you come out to the house and have dinner, huh? Talk over old times, your family. Sure, maybe. All right, you go right ahead. Tell me what you want to order. A thousand mattresses and box springs, huh? Ten thousand? Anything you want, my boy, and at a good price. Well, like I said, that depends. Uh huh. What kind of a deal? Is that what you mean? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you. Your papa's a very smart man, you know that? He's a good businessman. I know what he's thinking, so I know what you're thinking. All right. If you want to give me a nice big order for a lot of merchandise, I'll name you a price that you... Listen, Barney, I've got such a good customer in Philadelphia these days, not mentioning any names, but you'll pardon me, I don't even miss your papa's business. Understand me? But to get your business back again, I'll make you the same type deal I give this man. For a firm order, that is. You understand? No cancellations. You'll, uh... You'll uh, pre-ticket the merchandise. That mm -hmm. is, uh, put the list price on the labels for me, uh, for us. Any price you say, regardless of the cost to you. Uh, look over here, my boy. The pictures of our merchandise here on the wall. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Night Cloud Perfection Suite. Well, we'll put on any name you like. One should sound like some national brand, we'll think up a name for you. Not a bad deal, so far. And we make up as many models as you want. You know, we change just the ticking. They look different. All 196 springs, I personally guarantee it. Only 196? That's all you need, sure. Nobody can tell the difference. Except, of course, the demonstrators you keep on the floor to show the customer. <laughs> the demonstrators have got 392 springs. Those, you can jump on and bend them anything you like. Yeah, and the customer thinks that's the kind he's getting. What else? <laughs> I tell you, Barney boy, just as smart as your old man. Yeah. Now, uh, what about the price? Ah, the price. Now, Barney, this you can't resist. You understand, out here in the country... Low overhead, no labor problems, nobody snooping Yeah, around. yeah, I know. How much? Well, for you, my boy, how many? Well, uh, say uh, 10,000 units. 10,000 units. All right, I'll give you a special price. How much? Well, now, this depends on the ticking material. Hmm? You look here. See? First class material looks like twice the money. Go on. Plain blue and white ticking, that costs you. And remember, Barney, this is very special because of your papa and getting back his business. So, at 10,000 units in this ticking, $14.93, and you never saw such a buy. That okay? Eh, strikes me as a little high. A little high? I'm not making a thing on it. Look at here. This, the fancy ticking, this is real class. $15.06 a unit. Now, you can't beat that. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, of course, Barney, my boy, if you want to order a few no, more... No, no, no. I, I, I think maybe I can do better up in New England. In New England? Who? Tell me who. Well... All right. All right. Now, look. I told you, I've got a big customer in Philadelphia. Well, all right. Never mind. We'll do it the same way for you we do for him, all right? On the books. How do you mean? Well, I mean fourteen ninety three cents, huh? Only what would you think if the bill I send you says twenty nine ninety six? hmm? Double? Mm-hmm. You'd make it look like I paid twice as much? So? Yeah. Yeah. For tax purposes, I'd only be showing about half the profit I was actually making. <laughs> Smart boy, Barney. Or, uh, suppose I insured the stuff for the amount your bills showed, and something happened well, to it. Well, that's huh? right, sure. However you want... Excuse me. Hello. Oh! <laughs> Hello, Ben. I was just thinking of you. I hear you had a lucky fire up there. What? Oh, no, not now. Listen, Ben, I've got a customer. I've got... No, I've got an important customer here, the son of a very dear old... What? Yes, he is. Yes. A blue shirt and a bow tie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ben, I'll call you back. Mr. Dollar? That's right. Johnny Dollar. In person, Mr. From Golden. the insurance... Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Too no, bad no, Ben Murray's no. call interrupted our conversation. Oh, what have I said? That was a very interesting lot of facts you gave me, and I strongly suspect it'll not only put Murray out of business, but you too, and a lot of people you've been All dealing right, with. Dollar. Brother, I hate to think of what the Better Business Bureau oh, will do when they get hold the of these facts. Bureau. To say nothing of the Federal Trade Mr. Commission. Mr. Dollar, listen to But me. I have a notion it'll help to clear up one of the dirtiest chip rackets in years. There's no need Even to the long-suffering public understands this sort of shady operation when it's brought to their no, attention. not at all. As for the decent, if legitimate national firms you've been practically now, stealing from. Me, Dollar, will you please listen a minute? Yeah, go ahead. Business has been good. I've made a lot of money. Oh, now, wait Maybe a minute, you, you could use a little bit. You know, we'll call it the commission, huh? Say $10,000. In cash, it wouldn't show. Golden, well, I wouldn't even spit on that kind of money. Oh, I could maybe persuade you. You couldn't persuade me to have any part of it. Brother, you've had it coming for a long, long time. And believe me, I'm going to see that you get it. Understand? Yes, Dollar, you make it... I understand. 
I understand you, too. You dirty crook. You faker. You liar. You cheating, dirty, conniving, chiseling liar. You ruined me, you hear? You ruined me. Yes, Fred? I'm afraid that your nice client, Ben Murray, based his insurance claim on a lot of values that didn't exist. On the hiked-up prices. Hiked up to cheat you and the income tax boys. And if that is not right fraud, I'll eat my shirt. So you can just forget about paying that claim or any part of it. And I hope that you and the company will take whatever legal steps are necessary to put these guys out of business. Expense account total, including incidentals and the trip back to Hartford, $130.49. And cheap at half the price. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Kansas state flag is dark blue, and in the center is the state seal, surmounted by a large sunflower, the official state flower. The seal reflects the history of Kansas, the train of ox wagons going west, for most of the great roads passed through Kansas. An Indian is depicted chasing a herd of buffalo, recalling the words of the official state song, Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. For this truly was the home of the buffalo and Indian. The east is represented by a rising sun, and the promise of future prosperity is indicated by the steamboat on the river and the farmer plowing the field. Above a mountain range are 34 stars, for Kansas was the 34th state admitted to the Union. Over all is the state motto, ad astra per aspera, to the stars through difficulties. Kansas state flag, the flag of the 34th state to enter the Union, was adopted on March 23, 1927. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the case of a girl who was willing to kill for money she didn't need. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Russell Thorson, Jack Edwards, Will Wright, Paul Dubov, Lawrence Dopkins, and Vic Perrin. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.